Amen, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. And let me tell you something, Michelle. If that baby must come, that baby must come right. If the baby must come, the baby must come right. So people need to firm up and just let the Lord lead them. Nothing reckless can be permitted in this season. You see what I mean? And I'll tell you more about that in a, in, later on, maybe after service. I'm excited because I'm here. You know, because I was supposed to be out of town. But by God's divine orchestration, I am here. And um, I know this is the reason why I am here. At first, I was like, okay, I know God wouldn't have me get on that plane. Uh, but I wasn't sure why. And sometimes it doesn't even matter just yet. As long as I know that he doesn't want me to go and I haven't gone. But now I am seeing more into why. Because this is the next season for us. We're stepping into another season of the prophetic. Now the Lord is letting me know that we're in a season right now. Wherein the atmosphere of worship and the spirit of prophecy will be so intermingled amongst us. That we will not be able to tell where one ends and where another begins. You see what I mean? So as we are in worship, we will continue to experience such a, 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 a manifestation of the prophetic. We're going to enjoy the prophetic. It's going to be like a fruit. In fact, the Lord says it's not like a fruit. That was the fruit that I showed to you earlier in the day. <laughs> the Lord showed to me a fruit tree earlier in the day and I was trying to research it. I was trying to, because I heard the name of the tree before I saw the tree itself. And the Lord is saying to me that that is the fruit that we are enjoying in this season. Our beloved brother John has an amazing word ready to go tonight. And so brother John is going to come up in a minute, but I want you to do something for yourself. Alrighty. You see, because the man of God is coming to deliver the payload that God has sent through him as an oracle of God. But it is your responsibility to not just listen to that which is being said, by the oracle but to also listen to what the messengers of God that are standing beside you are saying also you see I think the Lord revealed it to me whether you or my wife that angels will be standing by each and every one of us in today's service and so let's all be ready to receive to lay hold of you can already tell certain things are unfolding on the inside of you and I want to tell you this one thing that I was reminded of today when the Word of God is coming forth for anybody in particular don't just take it as a word for them and be wishing that yours comes. The Bible says that when the word of the Lord came by the awesome, um, what's his name, angel Gabriel to Mary. The Bible says the word of God came to Mary that she will be found with child and that child will be given unto us. A child is born, unto us a son is given. So even the word of God was delivered to Mary, it was a word for the world. And so when God's word is coming to somebody, I want you to tap into it. That same word of God is able to heal, is able to save, is able to transform, is able to bring back from the brink of death. Now let me say this just to give glory to God. A couple of weeks ago, if you remember, I was wrapping up and the Lord said to me, pray for the children because of what I just showed you. So I saw a giant with a fishing net that was scooping children out of the water. You know, it looks like a man that was fishing, but it was not little fish, it was little children. And the Lord said to pray for little children. And you've been hearing the news, the various attacks on children. I heard of one that happened in Korea just a couple of days ago, about 154 children died in a stampede. Or in a stampede or whatever that word is when people try to get into one door at the same time. But I tell you what, when God says to pray like that, what do we do? We pray. Who knows? How close of a call that would have been to some of us. But we thank God because we prayed. And that is the reason why when the Lord says pray for a thing, we'll go ahead and do it. Not just here, but when we get home, we'll continue to pray. Alrighty, God is good. And so with Jesus' joy, as we used to say, I would like to welcome offstage Alice's husband, Brother John. Come on, let's give him a big hand. so much and I've been sharing some stuff with pastor and he's like man you got to share that with everybody uh, you know we've been talking a lot about prayer recently and I want to tell you a little bit of a transformation that happened in my life and a little
little bit. You know, when we started going here, uh, fun fact, we've been going here four years now. Four years. Wow. So, uh, you know, I've got video from in pastor prophesying over us, over my wife and I from 2018. And uh, I remember when we started out just with a handful of people in different locations and stuff. And um, it's really interesting. I remember, you know, we're going through stuff in life and I my mindset was totally different, especially when it comes to prayer. You know, we've been talking a lot about prayer recently, so it's really ignited some stuff in me. And it, it reminds me in 2018, I remember I didn't pray a lot. I remember that. And I remember one particular time uh, I was going through some stuff and I was literally, I would say, having a mental health crisis, just going through a lot of stuff. And uh, I remember getting on my knees that night and I prayed. And I remember uh, Kathy Fu actually invited us to here the first time. And uh, I remember, you know, getting on my knees and I prayed to God and I was like, God, why is this going on? God, why? And you just don't pray on my knees usually at that time. You know, now I do, but at the time I didn't. And <laughs> I remember at the time, you know, I just, you know, uh, I would pray, you know, and bow my head and pray. But it wasn't on my knees. It wasn't, you know, crying out to God. And I remember crying out to God that day, literally like, you, you've seen when David like ripped his clothes and he was out naked and he's like, literally like, God, what's going on? Have you ever had one of those moments in life before? If you haven't been through one, you know, that's that's a scary moment in life when you're literally like you don't care what anybody else thinks like you literally are like you just need God that's all and I was crying out to God and I remember we got invited and I went that night and I remember a pastor looked at me and I knew him a little bit from influencers but I didn't like know him know him you know I knew pastor but like literally know him <laughs> so and he looked at me and he said and I remember this he probably don't even remember this but I remember this and I got it on record and he said God saw you on your knees. And I was like, I had goosebumps. And I'm like, what? I'm like, how, how does God know that on my knees? Like, and he said, God saw you on your knees. And I was like, okay. And he's like, he heard you crying. And I was like, okay, God, what's the, what you trying to tell me? And it really showed me, you know, just that prayer, you know, it, it showed me how powerful this is. My first point, and I got three points tonight that really spoke to me. God, I was going a whole different way, and God literally put me in a whole different place. He was like, this is what you're speaking of. And I was like, nah, I kind of want to speak about this. And he's like, no, this is what you're speaking about. And literally, like, I had stuff prepared a week ago, and God shifted my mindset to something else. And number one, prayer is intentional. And I'll tell you some testimonies tonight, and I'll tell you some just things that changed in our life. You know, the first thing, you know, uh, the first thing was intentional when I was on my knees praying, and I, I cried out to God. I remember literally shaking, crying out to God that day, and I didn't even tell my wife all this, you know, but I remember that was one of the most serious times I ever prayed, and I really felt God when he said, you know, God heard you on your knees, and I was like, oh, God. Another moment. My daughter, and some of the men know this, I, I share a lot on Monday meetings, Monday men's, if you're not on the Monday men's stuff and you're a man in here, you need to be on there because God is changing people's lives. But I shared on the Monday men's meeting, my daughter, Felicity, I have four kids, and my my third one, uh, she had a little thing, a little, she was playing with a Barbie doll, and the Barbie doll's hair got trapped on her finger, and her finger started turning purple and blue, and couldn't get it off, like literally, I was trying to cut it off, I used soap, I was I literally like trying everything I couldn't get it off and we're a little bit panicking there no joke as I'm sitting there I'm like God let's go you know God help me and I heard as clear as day like I'm saying now it said I'm not joking and it just thinking about it it is it's powerful I heard a man's voice deep voice say put her finger in your mouth and I was like that's weird but I put it I didn't even question it I put her finger in my mouth and the string came off and I went, okay. And I saw when I cry out to God, there's some stuff happening. Okay, it wasn't myself. It had nothing to do with me. And I was like, and I told my wife, even to this day, that's I said, that's why one of the reasons I know God is real because I heard the voice, like literally I heard a voice. I can, as clear as it, you couldn't see it. I can't explain it. And some people were like, well, you didn't. And I'm like, no, I literally heard that voice. I'm like, I know what I heard because it shook me up. And even to this day, I'm like, I know what I heard. 
and it was an intentional intentional prayer another one you know there was a lady um that we know in our in our community and uh she was you know doing a lot of crazy stuff and i've shared this before you guys some of you guys know and i literally i remember praying i said lord i pray that you help them move away you know and it was kind of funny i know it's kind of funny but i literally prayed that and uh, I could have sued her. I could have, you know, done a restraining order. I could have done all this stuff because she was acting crazy. But I didn't. And I really believe, you know, I spoke, I called a law firm and asked for advice. And some of you guys know this. And I really believe it was an angel on the phone with me because he said, listen, if you do nothing, they will disappear like they are no more. And it was weird he said that because usually a law firm, they wanted your money, you know, like, come on, give me $1,000. I'll send you a letter or something in the mail. That's what usually, you know, they want your money. But no, this guy's like, if you do nothing, they will be no more. And that struck me, so I really think I really think it was an angel. I really believe that to this day, uh, because it was very strange that uh, lawyers don't usually say that. Okay, usually they want your money. So, so I was like, okay. So we we really trusted the Lord, and uh, I, I prayed intentionally. Like I remember praying several times. I was like, Lord, please help them to move. But they have been there for many years, like many years, like way before us. Okay, and I, I even looked on Zillow. I think they've been like 2012 or something. They moved there. So yeah, I'm talking like 10 years. They've been in the, been in this community, and it was interesting. I was sitting with a solar guy because we were getting solar put on the house, and you know, so I was sitting with a solar guy, and I really felt a movement in my spirit. And I was like, you know, I really feel a movement in my spirit to look them up. I don't even know why. It had nothing to do with the conversation with the guy who was sitting in front of me. Nothing at all. And the guy's just talking in front of me, and I really felt a move. So I got on Google, and I remembered their address, and I put it in Google and Zillow, and I saw they had moved. And I was like, okay, that's weird. Like, they moved a couple weeks ago. So we drove by over there, and they're, like, gone. Like, the house is vacant, like the little thing on the door. So I'm like, wow, what I prayed for, you know, God gave me my heart's desire. I was intentional. I said this, and I gave this to God. You know, I gave it to him. And I see how he literally answered my prayer. Uh, and it kind of sounds, people are like, well, that's, you know, you're praying somebody moved. And I was like, no, I really connected to God. I was like, God, this is why, you know, this is why. And God answered my prayer. So, you know, there's so many things it says, you know, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, it says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ for you. And I got a lot of verses here. It says, Mark eleven twenty four. 24, therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it is yours. Pastor talked about this before. If you believe your blessings are already coming, just think about it. Your blessings are already on the way. You said, well, God, I need that. You know, I need that healing. I need that, you know, that finance is coming in. They're already coming. They just haven't been activated yet. You don't see them yet, but they're coming. That's the way you got to look at it and be intentional with your prayers when you, you know, you, well, I want to marry this kind of person. You need to be intentional. This is the kind of person. I did that when I was, you know, when I was looking for my wife, I literally wrote down, I remember writing down, I was like, this is what I want, God, dun, 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 you know, and I wrote down all the stuff. I was intentional with my prayers. Matthew 6, 7, and when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Just be intentional. Ephesians 6, 18, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert. Always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. You know, one of the things I like to uh, look at, I was reading in 1 Samuel chapter 1, the story of Hannah. If you know the story of Hannah uh, with Eli, I really like this story because uh, Hannah's sitting there in 1 Samuel chapter 1, and she's praying. She's like, Lord, give me a child. Give me a child. She's being intentional in there. She don't even care what other people are thinking. And the priest at the time, he thought she was drunk because she's over there in her like, nothing's coming out of her mouth but her lips are moving and she's crying out to the Lord and you know he's like woman how much wine have you had today and she's like I haven't had any wine and then he changes his whole demeanor if you go read it and he's like okay well what do you want she's like you know I'm crying out to the Lord and you see later that God gave her what she asked for so we got to be intentional with the Lord not care what other people think you know, if God tells you something, you know, you have something on your heart. Be intentional with it. She didn't care what was going on, even though the people around her were judging her. You know, our next thing, prayer is a lifestyle. So prayer is intentional. Prayer is a lifestyle. You know, and I'm, I'm going to tell you a lot of uh, 
just different different things. You know, I've told Pastor a lot about a lot about my dreams. How when my lifestyle changed, it's many, interesting how my dreams started changing a lot. And I used to have like I've had a lot of dreams. Okay, listen, I can remember being a kid. I've had, I've had, I've had dreams since I was a little kid. And I remember being nine years old, sitting in my grandmother's house, mom and dad's house, and uh, I remember having the most vivid dreams you ever can imagine. And people always say, "Oh, you're," you know, people said you're a seer, and I'm like, "What does that mean?" And but I would have literally like not. I'm not talking like nightmares. Like I would have spiritual dreams uh, that would probably give some people in here. You know, I don't want to scare you before you go to sleep, but the. Uh, you know, I can remember one particular dream where, you know, there was a demon sitting in a chair and he looked at me, his head turned around and he said, John, you have no power here. Listen to me. And I remember him talking to me, literally, nine years old. Uh, those are the kind of dreams I was having. It literally said my name, John. Uh, not something you see in a movie. I'm talking, I, I can remember him clear as day. Uh, I mean, clear as day, I remember an old woman, her face shifting and going, so John, the dream and I wake up and I'd be like screaming uh that kind of stuff and I remember seeing this stuff and uh my lifestyle really didn't reflect Christ at the time uh even going in teenage years and I would always have these dreams I would get around people to pray or I noticed it because my grandma was always praying and I have these crazy vivid dreams and uh I noticed that I noticed a common theme you know um uh, but when my lifestyle started to shift and my prayers started to shift my dreams started changing my mindset started changing. Everything started changing a little bit. And Pastor knows, because I, I would tell Pastor some dreams. I remember some dreams where, uh, and I can just share some dreams with you, where, you know, I was in a crowd and all the faces started turning and looking at me. All the eyes just started looking at me. I remember faces that were, you know, clearly demonic. You can tell attacks. You know, where snakes started talking to me. I said, hey, you know, John. What are you? They, they would say my name. And I remember dreams, literally, I would talk to Pastor, and I would, I would say, Pastor, it was like I was Elijah in my dream. I was praying for hours, but I couldn't. It was literally, I'm praying, you know, Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name, and nothing was happening in my dream. It was like I was praying, but I didn't have any power. I know who Jesus is, praying tongues, but I didn't have any power in my dream. And things started to shift a little bit. My prayers and my lifestyle, my mindset, everything started to shift a little bit. Let me tell you about some of the dreams I've had recently. So, two, what is this, three weeks ago, I had a dream, and I'll tell you the one I had last night. Three weeks ago, I had a dream. Uh, there were snakes, but I was hunting them. I had a shovel in my hand, and I was hunting them. One of the guys that uh, works in my office there, he was sitting there, and there was a red snake, and I could tell it was a snake of lust. It was looking right at him. I remember the face he had I pulled him back like supernatural strength went <clears throat> and pulled him back and I hit it with my right hand and I remember and I hunted I was hunting the snakes there was a white snake there and I said we got to kill that thing before it gets other people I was hunting them I wasn't afraid in the dream it's a little bit different you can see the difference from being terrified of you know the demons are chasing me I remember dreams where literally I was running from a gas station and there were demons trying to kill me literally people chasing me you don't even know if you haven't seen a real demon i've seen a real demon if you haven't seen a real demon that'll wake you up uh not from a movie i'm talking about you ever seen one? Oh, oh it'll wake you up that's how you know jesus is real right there uh <laughs> so that wake you up but my dream started shifting so let me tell you what happened last night okay because my prayers have been intentional you know i pray for my family i pray for you know psalms 91 i pray for different people my prayers are intentional it's a lifestyle now. So last night I'm dreaming, and uh, several things happened in my dream. Several things. Number one, uh, I bought my parents' old house, and we were cleaning it up. I didn't even tell Pastor this part. And uh, there were people cleaning it up. And the dream was shifting. It was like kind of like shifting in stages. And uh, then I was in a place, and I was praying in tongues. And there was people all around me, and some family members and other people. And I remember praying in deep were coming out of people. It's like they split open, like kind of like an egg, like they split open. They were green things, like green and black little things, and they were just coming out of people. Um, they were like they would like split in half, like people's just their skin would just split in half. There's people, you know, demons coming out of them. And I remember one person had two demons inside of them. I was praying, and literally just two of them ran out of them. 
and I was praying in tongues and I woke up around 2.30 and I said in Jesus name and I'm back to sleep but that was my dream is I'm casting out demons now and they're running I'm not running from them because you know the authority you have but many times as believers though you know we have we know who Jesus is but we lack the power is, is the problem it's kind of like we're praying you know like the demon says I know who Paul is I know who Peter is who are you you know you said Jesus you said who are you that's a lot of us though is it's kind of like we're all batteries but some people are dead batteries you're still going to heaven but you know you're not believing in healing you believe in Tylenol more than Jesus is healing and you know you don't believe in healing and you don't believe in this and that and I see and I'm I'm convicted of this because like recently I was sick and it's kind of funny I was sick and and uh I wasn't feeling well at all and I was sitting in bed and I was aching and groaning and my wife is amazing like she when she's when she's sick she don't even take Tylenol or anything like she don't even do epidural for the baby she's like she's like I got God I'm good and I'm like that's amazing uh me I'm like give me some Tylenol uh so I'm sitting there I'm like I'm really in pain and I'm like God help me she's like come on you always preaching healing I'm like Come on. And I'm like, and that hit me a little bit. And I was like, Lord convicted me a little bit. Lord convicted me. And I was like, okay, God, you know, a lot of times we go through stuff. God's showing us something. I'm like, man, is my faith really that weak? That when a, a trial comes, you know, where's my faith in healing? And that, that hits us. You know, as believers, you know, we got we to gotta have a lifestyle of prayer connecting with the Holy Spirit and we're seeing him work in our lives so when those trials come we're not like Job's wife that says curse God and die we're like Job that's like no you know I can endure this you know which one are you when the trial comes it's because it's easy to praise God when everything's going great you know you're like Jesus come on thank you everything's great it's hard to trust God when your kid's sick your kid's got cancer or you don't know when your money's coming in or somebody just left you and you're like crap now I'm a single parent or you don't know what's going on. It's a lot harder. That's when reality hits. And you're like, well, God, I didn't sign up for this. Where's it? Where's this going on? You know, as my, you know, I see how my dream shifted as my lifestyle shifted, as my prayer shifted, everything shifted. And that's, you know, I see in my dreams today, you know, I dream a lot. I dream about people. I dream about different things. You know, it's interesting. I had the same dream three times. I told Brother Allen about it. I had a dream, somebody else in here had a dream, the exact same dream as me, uh, where there was a Chucky doll trying to come to the house, and I literally, I punched it, and it, it flew off. Somebody else had the exact same dream as me, and uh, literally, Chucky doll was trying to come to the house, I opened the door, and I literally punched it, and the, and the thing flew off. Uh, and I don't even watch horror movies, because that stuff scares me, so I don't even watch that stuff, so I don't even know where that came from, and I was like, it's obviously spiritual, because I don't even watch that nonsense. <laughs> so... Uh, you know, it shows you, it shows you the power we have. Uh, one of the things here, I got, I got some verses here, you know, as a lifestyle, Daniel 10, 10, and in his upper room, when his windows opened toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks to God because as his was his custom since early days. I love studying Daniel because besides Jesus, Daniel's the only guy in the Bible we don't really see him sinning. You know, some of the other people we see, we see like they're angry or they did with lust, or we see like, you know, we see this stuff, we see Peter, we see Paul's history, we see this stuff, but you don't really see a lot on Daniel. So I thought it was interesting as as was his custom, three times a day the man prayed. As was his custom. And I was like, okay, if the Muslims even praying five times a day, God convicted me on this. He's like, how many times are you praying? Are you just praying before you eat? I mean, seriously. My friend, my good friend's a, a missionary to Turkey, and he told me, he's like, he's like, I cannot tell them I'm from America, because if I do, he's like, it, it really, it's really sad, because they say that's a pagan country. He said, because people will go, oh, Hollywood, no, people are naked, people are, no, 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 no. And he said, people don't assume we're a Christian country anymore, because our lifestyle doesn't reflect that. And that's one of the things, is your lifestyle, how does your lifestyle reflect? God really convicted me that I was going to buy some furniture. I was going in a furniture store. Uh, this is like half a year ago. And this guy was going, I was going to ask him how much is this chair? And he goes, hold on one second. 
he literally gets on the ground and starts praying. It's a Muslim guy. And like, literally, I'm looking at this expensive piece of furniture. He just starts praying. You would think he'd be like, you know, let me sell it because I'm getting commissioned. You know, let me sell it. Mm -mm. He's like, hold on one second, sir. I'll be back in two minutes. Gets his rug, starts praying. He goes, sorry about that. I said, no, man, don't apologize. I said, I'm very happy that, you know, your faith is real. I said, we don't have the same religion, but I really respect that you, it means that much to you. It's that authentic that instead of you getting a sale right now, you would actually go over there and do what you believe. You're practicing what you preach. And I convicted me a little bit and I was like, hmm, how much do we pray? You know, is it a lifestyle? Is our prayer intentional? Or are we just like McDonald's prayers, you know? And that's most of the time we see with believers. That's why a lot of us don't have power. That's why a lot of our dreams, we don't even remember our dreams. We don't even remember them. I remember my dreams. You know, you actually, you know, uh, I'm a licensed counselor, and I'll tell you, you actually dream every single night. Most people just don't remember them in the first 20 seconds you wake up. And a lot of your dreams are spiritual. It's God communicating with you. A lot of people don't know that. So I tell you, you know, is your prayer one of life, a lifestyle? Uh, if we look back at Daniel here, now I really like it right here. It says in Daniel chapter 10, verse 12, it says, then he continued and said, so Daniel's been praying, okay? We're going fast forward. Daniel's been praying. And we see, you know, Daniel has such a lifestyle of praying that even when, you know, his friends are getting thrown in the furnace and, and you know, he's getting thrown in the lion's den and all this stuff. Daniel doesn't give up. A lot of us, when trials happen in life, we give up and we're like, God, why'd that happen to me? Think about that. They're like, somebody offended me in church. I'm not going to church anymore. Mm -mm. You know, somebody said this. I'm not going anymore. God, why'd you do that? And God's over here like, man, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever the same. Uh, I didn't do that to you. And, but a lot of us, our faith is very shallow. And I went through this, you know, it's just growing time when we change our mindset and we go, you know, that's why we got to have a lifestyle of prayer. It's a daily thing. Daniel, three times a day, when the trials came, Daniel was ready. And in the lion's den, he was saved. He didn't wait till the trial came. And he's like, you see those people on TV, big tsunami happens, something happens. They're like, God, why did this happen? God, please save us. And God's like, who are you again? You know, and where you been all that time? Yeah. So he goes, you know, it's kind of like this is you say, that's my girlfriend or my boyfriend on Facebook. And you're like, but I talked to them once a year on Easter. Are they really your boyfriend or girlfriend? Not really. You're kind of treating them like a prostitute, honestly. Just when you want something, you're going to get it. And a lot of people, you know, that's us as Christians. And we say we're Christians. But when we're fake like that, it's very hard to tell people about Jesus. And that's why a lot of people, you know, they'd rather go to the bar than come talk to the Christian because they know the Christian's like, man, that guy don't even pray. His lifestyle didn't even start that way. Nah, he, he don't even believe in healing, man. He takes Tylenol. He don't even, nah, look at his lifestyle six days a week. No, that's Jesus. I don't want that. I had somebody tell me that recently. They were like, man, that's Jesus. I don't want that. And I was like, that's not Jesus. Just because you've been offended by people in the church, that is not Jesus. And our lifestyle has to reflect him. So we see Daniel, you know, Daniel's praying and praying and praying and praying. He's like, what's going on? Daniel chapter 10, verse 12. He continued, you know, since the, and the angel of the Lord comes and says, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before God, your words were heard. And I have come in response to them. But the prince of Persia's kingdom resisted me for 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Now I've come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future. So if you look, it's really interesting. You know, Pastor talked about this recently, how sometimes you pray and it happens later. It doesn't happen like a lot of people expect Jesus to be on the American clock. And they're like, Jesus, I pray for this. And then like 10 minutes later, you expect, you know, people expect it like a happy meal. It's like it just comes out. God don't work like that. I talked to a lot of people like that I'm like, look throughout the scripture and see David when he when he before he became king, like David was hunted down. He actually lived in a, a cave, acted like he was crazy. He lived with his enemies. Like, go and study these people. Like, the promise is that, you know, the prophets and everything, a lot of people went through a lot of hell before they 
before stuff happened. Before those, they got prophesied over. And like, I'm talking like one, two, ten years. Some people waited for stuff. People were like, oh, you're going you're gonna, to, you know, have a child. And then she's like, I'm 70 years old. What are you talking about? You're going to get married. It's like, but it's been ten years. But a lot of people are like, well, that man must have been lying because he prophesied this and that didn't happen. Well, you know, God's not on the American clock. We see that. For 21 days, Daniel's over here. Remember, he prayed three times a day. It was his custom. He's praying, God, do this, God, do this, God, do this. Nothing happened. The angel of the Lord comes and goes, I was coming. You know, imagine when he probably said, thank you for being faithful. Thank you for being faithful. You didn't give up. But a lot of us, God don't answer our prayer right away. And you're like, well, he didn't give me that house I wanted. It's kind of like my wife and I, we were praying for this house one time. We had a beautiful pool and big ceilings and all this house. We were praying for like, God, give us this house. And the, all this weird stuff was happening. Like, like the banker at the bank quit after like 25 years of being there. Literally, like, we were like, who does that? Like, literally, he just quit. And the banker, like the head banker guy was like, we don't know what happened to him. I'm like, what? Like, I just paid my money, my earnest money to him. And I'm like, where the heck did he go? And they're like, we don't know. And he just disappeared after 25 years of being here. I'm like, what? And then the, my agent, his wife passed away. He disappeared for like a week in, in mourning. And, and all these weird things, was, and my agent like forgot to, sign the, forgot to sign the paperwork. And it was like, all these weird things happened. Like things are way beyond your control. And you're like, like what the heck? And it was like, bam, 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 bam. Like all within like seven days, all this stuff happened. And we didn't get the house. But it was weird because the house wasn't even that expensive. Like I look back now and I'm like, what the heck? It's, it's really weird. But God had a plan. And then, you know, God provided an even better house. An even better house. And I look back and I was like, God, thank you that you didn't answer my prayer that time. You had a, you had a, you had a plan. You know, God, and God had a plan. And then, I mean, I could go time after time after time. And maybe you're in a relationship with somebody. You're like, God, help this work out. What's going on with this? And God's like, but I got somebody better for you. You know, yeah, I could do that if you want, but I got somebody better for you. And if I do this, you know, it's not going to end good. I got a better plan for you. Um, Matthew 26, 41 says, watch and pray so that you do not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Romans 8, 26, in the same way, the spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for. The spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Colossians 4, 2, devote yourself to prayer, being watchful and thankful. All through scripture, we see this. When our lifestyle becomes one of prayer and we are intentional, everything shifts. Everything. You know, you know, and my third bullet point, prayer changes our mindset. You know, it, it changes our entire mindset. You know, I can tell you just what finance changes. Uh, you know, four years ago, my mindset on finances was like a trillion times different than what it is now. Because, uh, you know, I used to think, you know, oh man, it's hard to make money. You know, uh, it's hard to make money. I got to get a job to make money and all these things. Um, and I had a more of a, I would say, slave mindset to the system than what I do today. Today, I'm like, man, it's easy to make money. Uh, my whole mindset shifted. When your lifestyle shifts, your mindset shifts. When your prayers become intentional, your lifestyle shifts, which then does your mindset will shift. Everything shifts, but it starts when we start, you know, becoming intentional. We go, God, this is what's going on. We be real with God. That's the thing is you can't be two-faced and you act one way one day and the other day you act in somebody totally different. You know, a lot of people are that way. And that's why, you know, it gives a lot of Christians bad names. And that's why I said a lot of people want to go to the bar rather than going to the church because they're like, at least people there are real. At least they know what they believe in. I mean, it's true. So that's why, you know, our mindset, our lifestyle, our prayers, everything has to be intentional. You know, Jesus is coming back soon, and there's not a lot of time to be, you know, messing around. There's not a lot of time. I'm telling you, more and more people report dreams they're having. 
I hear dreams all the time, people telling me stuff. More and more stuff. You see it, Pastor talks about it. You know, more and more stuff is going down, and you better be intentional with what you pray, and you better know who you are in Christ. Because I don't want to be the one to get to heaven, and God says, listen, you're going to school the next 1,000 years because you are not faithful. You are not faithful with what I gave you. You know? A lot of people are going to be doing that. He's going to say, you are not faithful with what I gave you. You knew what you were supposed to do. I gave you opportunity, and you chose not to do it. So you know what? Oh, you're going to heaven. You believed in me, and you served me, and you know, you're going there. But you know what? I'm not giving you any responsibility. I'm not giving you any authority, nothing. You're going to sit here, and you're going to learn until you're ready. And that's going to be pretty serious, or worse. Who knows what's going to happen? So that gives me a little bit of chills, and I think about it, you know, as I'm like, like Jesus. What's my lifestyle reflect? What's my lifestyle reflect? You know, I think about that every day now. So I'm like, I'm really, really trying to change who I am. Like every day, my wife knows this. I'm like, literally every day I'm trying to be a better person. And I'm like, God, how can I be better? Can I talk to that person more? Can I do this better? Can I serve someone better? What can I do better? Every day I think that, literally every day. And that's the way we got to be. And it's not me. It's what God commands us to be. It's nothing special. It's what we're supposed to do. If you look at the lives of the disciples, just go back and read. Go back and read. What did they do? How did they live? You know, it says, um, you know, I, I want to read one thing here about, uh, uh, you know, I want to compare two people. Both were chosen and called by God. Both these people. One is Samson. One is Samuel. Look at these two people. One is Samson, one is Samuel. Both were called by God from a young age. Both were set apart. Okay? Both were honored by the priest. Both had the angel of the Lord show up when they were babies. Both of them. One's life ended in suicide. The other one's ended much differently. So let's look at this. If you look, I'm not going to read it all for time's sake, but, you know, it's, it's interesting, in Judges chapter 14, they talk about, I don't know if you ever read, go back and read, you know, the story of Samson, and it's, I really found it fascinating, because the angel of the Lord comes, and even his parents are like, can we detain you here? And they like literally try to like grab the angel, like, go back and read it in Judges 14. It's really interesting, and they literally went and grabbed the angel, and the angel like disappears in fire later. It's, it's a crazy story, and uh, I didn't even like know all this, and I was reading, I'm like, wow, and it's interesting, I was like, I was telling my wife on the way, I was like, it's interesting, a lot of these people in the Bible want to detain angels. They're like, all trying to like, grab angels, you know? Like Jacob and all these people trying to grab angels. And, you know, Samson's parents were like, can we, you know, they're trying to, and they're like, he's set apart, can't touch dead animals, can't do this and this, all these rules. And they're like, okay. Two chapters later, and it's like, and Samson went to go visit the harlot prostitute. And, and I'm like, man, a lot changed in two chapters. Uh, so... <laughs> Two chapters later, you're like, okay. Uh, so Samson, Samson's not, not doing too hot. And you can look, like, even one chapter later, it's like, and Samson killed 2,000, you know, like, all the stuff Samson's not supposed to do. Samson's killing people. Samson's sleeping with a lot of different women. Samson's doing all this stuff. And it's interesting, though, uh, you know, if we look at the end of Samson's life, you know, God gives him back, as you know, you know, gives him back his strength. He's blinded, and he you know, all the pillars come tumbling down. He basically commits suicide, if you read it. Uh, even though he was called by God, even though, you know, he was blessed in birth, and, you know, God knows everything. The beginning and the end, he knew what was going to happen. He knew. But you look at that, and it's interesting. What was his lifestyle? Did we ever see Samson praying throughout there? No, we don't. I read through the entire thing, okay? Literally, I read through it all. We don't see Samson. We see him praying like when he died, okay? He doesn't, he doesn't. No, his lifestyle was not one of prayer. So, but it's interesting, you know, God blessed him, but imagine what would have happened if his lifestyle would have been different, what he could have done. Imagine what he could have done. God gives a lot of his gifts in here, but our lifestyle doesn't reflect that. And we see what happens. We waste it in the end of our life. It's kind of like Solomon. We're like, it's all meaningless. And that's what happens is we waste that gift God gave us. He's like, man, I gave you a talent. You're supposed to be using that. You know, kind of reminds me of, kind of reminds me of, I knew this kid who was an amazing basketball player, football player, all these things. My dad actually mentored him over in Charleston. 
this guy was amazing, and uh, he was witness to him, telling about the Lord, everything. And this guy uh, gotten in with the wrong crowd, met, you know, got in basically with a gang in high school, and they said, hey, why don't you, uh, uh, as initiation, uh, respond to this ad on Craigslist, and we'll steal this guy's truck for fun. Go to, they do it for fun, you know, steal the guy's truck, ha, 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 ha. The guy pulls out a gun, he pulls out a gun, he shoots the guy in the truck. State of South Carolina says, uh, you killed him in blood, you know, murdered him. Uh, you're on death row. 18 years old. Death row. They said, but you can plead and you can spend the rest of your life in prison if you want. So you know what? It's the next 70 years he's in jail. This guy was like, literally had like top in the nation, Alabama, all these, kind, all these places looking at him for football. He's in prison right now in South Carolina. And it's, it's very sad because, you know, he had a calling on his life. He was, you know, Jesus in youth group in a calling on his life. But his lifestyle, you see the difference, what happened. Now, let's look at Samuel here. You know, it's a little bit different. If you, if you look at, you know, in 1 Samuel 3, 19, it says, shows Samuel grew up and ministered to all around. He walked in his calling. His mindset was totally different. Samuel was literally, from a child, he was out there ministering to people as a child. It reminds me of a little pastor saying, like, when he was a kid, he would go knock on doors randomly, like, you know, minister to people. That's what Samuel was doing. Like, he was literally, like, knocking on doors, and he was like, have you heard about the Lord? Have you heard about the Lord? Have you heard? And I'm like, man, I can't imagine. I got four kids. I can't imagine my kids, like, going, like, door to door and be like, have you heard about the Lord? Like, that's really amazing. And if you look at Samuel's lifestyle, Samuel's lifestyle was one of servant. He was, he was a servant. And even when the people, you know, are begging, hey, we want a king, we want all this stuff. Samuel, he's always serving. All of his stuff was focused on the Lord. His entire mindset was like, okay, we're going to sacrifice for the Lord. He's crying out for the Lord in this verse, crying out to the Lord in this verse, crying out to the Lord in this verse. And it's interesting, you see, his entire mindset was totally different. His lifestyle was one of prayer and worship. It was a lot different than Samson. Both men were set apart. It's very interesting. It says, you know, in Romans chapter 8, verse 5, those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set on the spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God, does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. Down in verse 9 it says, However, you, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong in Christ. 1 Peter 1 verse 13 says, Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Christ Jesus is revealed at His coming. You know, one of the big things is, you know, you got to know who you are in Christ. You know, know who you are in Christ. It's interesting. I was talking to the men's group the other day about, you know, Rahab. Rahab was a harlot, a prostitute. And, you know, even though she had all this past, you know, God used her and saved her entire family. You know, God doesn't care about your past or whatever is going on in that thing. All he wants is, you know, if you humble yourself and pray and turn from your wicked ways, he, he says in the Bible, you know, he'll heal your land. God's going to save you, you know, but it takes repentance. You know, turn from your ways and say, God, you know, help me, change me. And what I remember just when you have that lifestyle, you're intentional with your prayers. And you have that lifestyle of prayer and your mindset shifts. You see everything shift. And we saw that with Rahab, you know, all these people around her died, but God saved the harlot. There was probably a lot more better righteous people in that city. Don't you think so? There probably were. You know, another one I was talking about recently is, let's, let's look at, you know, in Acts chapter 5, it talks about Ananias and Sapphira. I, I really love this story. Because in Ananias and Sapphira, if you look, these people, you know, probably well-liked, dressed nice. They sold some land. And they go to Peter and they go, uh, here's the money. You know, we sold some land. Did they have to give the money to them? No. They could have not even said anything and just be like, you know, I mean, it's our, our land, we need to sell it, whatever. But 
the issue is, you know, they sold the land and then they were deceitful and their lifestyle, they went and they lied and both of them ended up dead. They had the mindset of, no, I'm going, I'm going to lie and see if I can get away with this. So you see this, when, when our lifestyle and our mindset are opposite of God, what happens? You can be, you know, look at, look at Samson. Samson was in church when he was a baby. Innocent and Ananias and Sapphira were given offering. Look what happened. And what happened to both of them? They both, they all ended up dead. Even there's a story about the Ark and the Covenant was fallen one day and the, you know, the guy reached out and he said, let me grab it. And God struck him down. He had good intentions probably. So that's what I tell you as I say, how does, what is your lifestyle like today? You know, uh, do you have a lifestyle of prayer? You know, or is it one of self? You know, lifestyle, you know, is it a prayer or is it one of self? You know, prayer is, should be intentional. It should be a lifestyle and a mindset. You know, like Samson, you know, everybody in this room, we all know who, who God is. But you got to choose which path you're going to take. You know, when I was living in myself, you know, I was having spiritual dreams. Yeah, I was having spiritual dreams. I knew who God was. I could preach to you all kinds of stuff. But I was living for myself. When I changed my lifestyle and my mindset, my dreams shifted, my finance shifted, my marriage shifted, everything shifted. Because it wasn't just about me. It was like I was in a big fog. I tell my wife all, this, all the time, you know, it's, if you haven't been there, you know, or if you're still in the fog, you know, come talk to me. Uh, a lot of people, especially men, are in a big fog all the time. You know, you're in a fog. And this is why people struggle with addiction for 20 years, 30 years. You know, addicted to everything, you know, cigarettes, pornography, alcohol, everything you can possibly, 20, 30 years, people struggle with this stuff. When Jesus already set you free on the cross. Because you're in a fog. And you don't realize who you are in Christ. And that's why you're having nightmares at night. That's why you don't even remember your dreams. You know, not your dreams are just like, ah, I'd wake up and I'm just tired all the time. Well, you're probably having spiritual dreams. You just don't remember after 20 seconds when you wake up. But you're probably having very spiritual dreams. You just don't remember because you don't know the authority. You don't know the authority. You know, Pastor talked about one time how we're all avatars. You know, one day, your soul's going to go somewhere. And I encourage you, you know, you need to get right with God because you don't know when your last day is. And it's a serious thing. You need to get right with God. You know, know who you are in Christ. Is your religion one that your parents gave you? I mean, if your parents were Buddhist, would you be Buddhist today? Ask yourself that. If your parents were Muslim, would you be Muslim today? And I, I, like, to ask, I like to ask people that I say, you know, why are you a Christian? What if you're wrong and you die? Why? Why are you a Christian? Like, seriously, ask yourself that and say, well, why? Is it because mom told you? You need to have a personal relationship with Jesus. Your prayers need to be intentional. Your, it should change your lifestyle and your mindset should be shifting. Because the more you pray, the more your mindset shifts. The more you pray, the more your mindset shifts. Amen. That's what I got today. Let's close in prayer today. Amen. Dear Lord, we just thank you for this service, Lord. We just thank you for every person here, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for Communion House, Lord. We thank you for touching every person here, Lord. Thank you for strengthening them, Lord. Whatever's going on, Lord, in their lives, we lay it before you now, Lord. If it's marriage issues, relationship, financial, children issues, Lord, sickness, disease, whatever it may be, Lord, we thank you, Lord. You've already covered it with your blood, Lord Jesus. You've already covered it, Lord Jesus. We thank you, 1 Peter 2, 24 says, by your stripes, we are healed, Lord. We thank you, you are our provider. You are our God, you are our rock, Lord. You are, Lord, here for us right now, Lord Jesus. 
you are here for us, Lord. We lay it before your feet, Lord. Thank you for strengthening every single person here, Lord, whatever they're struggling with right now, Lord. If it's an addiction, we thank you for breaking those chains off of them right now in the name of Jesus, Lord Jesus. The demons would flee, Lord. When they walk home right now, Lord Jesus, when they go home, the demons would come out of their house, Lord. Whatever they're struggling with, those addictions would be broken in Jesus' name. Addictions be broken in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, we thank you for a change in mindset, Lord. That fog will be ripped away, Lord. A change in mindset right now, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your strength, your Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus. Your Holy Spirit coming upon them now, Lord. Your Holy Spirit, Lord, strengthening them, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. In Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Oh, glory to God, glory to God. Let's celebrate our brother John. Amen. We're going to prepare, first of all, what a word, a reminder, encouragement to pray. If we're not praying already, look, I don't know what the problem is because this is our heritage, all right? We can't expect to see success without prayer. And so, Let's begin to uh, prepare. We're going to take the elements. We're going to do communion. My brother Kenyatta, if you help us uh, pass that out. Um, while we're doing that, let's all stand, please. Let's uh, begin to worship the Lord as we prepare to take the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. And while we're preparing that and we're posturing our hearts, I want to give us a quick story. I was with the man of God, Pastor Moses, at his house not long ago, and he and I were outside talking, and we were discussing the things of God, and the man of God kicked his shoes off. <laughs> Middle of the conversation. And I said, all right. <laughs> but I knew the man of God was seeing. And when I got home, I was before the Lord. I said, Lord, come on, why didn't I kick my shoes off too? I knew the man of God was seeing, either seeing a vision, an angel was beside us because we were discussing the things of God. The scriptures say, well, two or three are gathered in his name, that he is in the midst of them. And it wrecked me. And I want to encourage us with this. The book of Acts, I know y'all laughing, but I, I want to help us because a lot, lot of us have been desiring to really be stepped up in the unction. All right, and observing and discerning, I wanna encourage us with this. The book of Acts chapter seven, verse 33, it reads, then the Lord said to him, take your sandals off your feet for the place where you stand is holy ground. When the prophet came up and began to minister to each and every one of us, he said, this is holy ground. Now, if you are able, as we're preparing the elements, as we're gonna take of the bread and the wine, take your shoes off. And this is a thing, we're not making an idol out of it, we're not making religion out of it, but this helps us by faith to posture ourselves to know the move of God, to know what he's doing in the house. Thank you, brother. And let's worship God where you are. Si itara, fu suhura. Father, we thank you. Su utera bababasi. E kante eshu o te ar ama su ute. I su ure bebe si ita. Isara babasi. Because there's something about this holy ground because when we know it's holy ground, we know the Lord is there to encounter us. What were we just encouraging ourselves with before we came into the, uh, into the sanctuary? For us to place a demand on his presence for insight. And what began to happen? We began to receive insight. We began to receive the word of knowledge concerning what we got going on. And so... I want to help us tonight by the grace of God to take our discernment to the next level. It's little things like this that will help you, okay, when we come in His presence to go further, to experience deeper depths in Him. Father, we give you praise. There's none like you, O God. Father, we thank you for your word declares that when the bread was broken, their eyes were open. Father, we love you. We thank you, O oh God, because you have come to sit where the praises of your children are. 
what the praises of Israel are. Father, we thank you because you have met with us tonight. You have spoken to us plainly. All glory belong to you. This is the body of the Lord Jesus. This is the blood of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for the finished work of the cross. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that speaks better things than that of the blood of Abel. Now, Lord, we drink and we eat to your remembrance now in the name of Jesus. Let's partake. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Brother Charles, if you don't mind clicking the offering slide there. Thank you, sir. We're going to prepare to give our offering. We'll have the giving details on the screen in just a couple of seconds. Let's give in faith. Let's give in thanks for what the Lord has done for us here tonight. Lord, you have shown yourself merciful. Lord, you have seen us and kept us on our ascent up the mountain. Father, we thank you because we have encountered you as I am. You're the same one that delivered Israel from the hands of Egypt. And Lord, you do it again. You deliver us again. Father, we thank you for every word that has gone forth. And Lord, we ask of thee, command your angels to take charge over your children tonight. To take charge over every word that has gone forth tonight. For Lord, we know we shall see it come to pass for your glory. Oh God, we give you praise. We thank you for the offering even tonight. Lord, let these offerings, let these tithes be sweet smelling. Let them be pleasing in your sight, oh God. Lord, cause them to be pleasing such that you move, oh God, in our midst. Father, let it be like the sweet incense, oh God. Let these come up before you, oh God, as such an offering of praise, of thanksgiving unto you. Father, we thank you for the angels that you have assigned us these, this season. Oh God, where you help us to perform in such a way to where we know it's by your hand and by your hand alone that you have done it. Father, we thank you that you have looked upon the households here, the bloodlines here, oh God, and you've given us wisdom and insight. Lord, we ask of thee continue to grant unto us a spirit of wisdom and of revelation. Father, all glory and honor belong to you. We thank you for the seeds that have been brought before you, O oh God, for we know that you give seed to the sower. Help us, O oh God. We praise you. We worship you in spirit and truth. All glory and honor belong to you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Everyone have a blessed week.